Hey everybody. So um, I apologize in advance if this video is a little bit longer than uh, I originally intended. Also, I apologize in advance if I'm looking down most of this video. Um, my webcam is positioned on top of my monitor this time and it's a little bit tall. So um, anyway, let's get into this. So today we're talking about reliable versus unreliable sources. I'm going to be talking to you today about what makes good sources good. How do you know whether or not the information at your fingertips is legitimate or not? And I find that this is probably going to be the most important uh, lesson that I can teach you during the entire school year. It is so important that you understand, not just for papers in class, not just for English class or, you know, school stuff, but how do you differentiate fact from fiction on the internet? Uh, this is a skill that you're going to need throughout the rest of your life. And especially these days with um, places like Facebook and Twitter and whatnot getting under fire from both sides of the political spectrum for trying to take a stand against uh, inaccurate sources. Uh, you know, the, the hashtag fake news, if you will. So, you know, Twitter's trying to put a stop to this, Facebook's trying to put a stop to this, and whatever your political leanings, uh, you might feel this is a bit more nefarious. You might feel it's not a big problem. I don't know. I'm not here to judge. All I'm here to tell you is that this is something that you need to be able to do on your own. Okay, this is something that you need to know. This is a skill that you need to know, not just for social media, not just for classes, but for your day to day life. How do you know what news you can trust going forward? And it can get kind of scary out there, especially when you feel, you know, if you feel that uh, you're being manipulated or lied to or that your strings are being pulled in a certain way. Um, again, I'm not here to judge. I'm not here to take sides. I'm just saying you need to be aware so that you can um, be educated on your own, okay, and so that you're not being manipulated by forces around you. So, okay, that being said, we already just talked about reliable sources. So basically, the, the gist of this slide is that you want to make sure that the sources that you're using are as reliable as possible. Now, can you say for certain that your sources are 100% reliable? Probably not, uh, especially these days. It's much less likely that you're going to be able to say with any amount of certainty that your sources that you're using are 100% legitimate. Um, and we'll, we'll get more into that. But you do want to make the effort to demonstrate that your sources are oops, sorry I'm trying to lift my chair up and it's not working so we'll just deal with it um, you want to make sure that your sources are as legitimate as possible okay um, and there's a number of different ways that you can do this the more and we'll be talking about those in this video the more reliable that you can make your sources, make your evidence, the much more believable you will be as a, a person attempting to argue, and the more likely you will get others to listen to what you have to say. On the flip side, if you're one to be known to use sources that are questionable in nature, then the more you try to argue, the more people will tune you out and no longer listen to what you have to say, because then at that point you kind of sound like Chicken Little, you know. If you're constantly posting information from sources known to be uh, weak or known to be, you know, conspiracy theory type sources, people will just be like, oh, it's that guy again. Um, but if you're one to be known to always fact check what you post and always use the most reliable sources that you can, then when you post something or when you say something or when you have an opinion, people will be like, oh, maybe I should listen to that person. Maybe they're onto something here. So keep that in mind. And 
Then we get into the Wikipedia battle. Not all sources are created equal. Um, and in spe uh, specifically, when we're talking about something like Wikipedia. Now, I'm not here to say that you should never use Wikipedia. I'm all for Wikipedia. Use it. It's a great source for educating yourself about the basis or the basics of something. Don't use Wikipedia to uh, try to prove your point. Use it to understand the topic, sure, but don't use it to try to prove or disprove somebody's points okay and the reason for that is because wikipedia is one of those sources that can be edited by literally anybody um case in point uh, you see on the screen here somebody apparently had a, an issue with richard sherman the football player and uh this is what they edited his page to say um a few years ago just to prove a point on the validity of Wikipedia, I got on Wikipedia, and this is around October, this is around Halloween. I got on Wikipedia and I typed in the word candy. And then I typed in the middle of one of the paragraphs that Mr. Nyman, that'd be me, is the definition of sweet. I was just being funny, I was just kidding, whatever, and I hit submit. Now, Wikipedia, to their credit, they flagged it right away, but I checked it every single day to see how long it would take their moderators to fix what I'd written. It took months. Now, in the months that it took them to edit back or delete what I had written, um, <clears throat> I got an email from some random teacher in, I believe it was Minnesota. And she said, are you Mr. Nyman? And I said, yeah. And she said, um, are you the Miss, did you get on Wikipedia and change some things in the candy page? And I was like, yeah, as a matter of fact, I did. I was trying to prove point. And she laughed about it. She said she teaches uh, middle school and that she was starting to teach her students about using sources and she, you know, they were doing this around Halloween and she was wondering why she got so many sources that mentioned, or so many papers that mentioned my name in their papers because they were doing this around Halloween candy. And I told her my story and she laughed and uh, it was a good teaching moment for both of our classes. So long story short, don't trust Wikipedia to prove your points. Trust it to maybe, and I wouldn't even say trust. Trust is a, a heavy word. I wouldn't trust Wikipedia for anything except maybe getting some bare bones, basic knowledge of a given topic. Okay. I wouldn't use it as a source. I wouldn't use it as uh, evidence of any sort. I would just use it for my own knowledge to maybe learn a little bit more about a particular topic. And that's it. So who can you trust? Well, let's start with some basics. The first thing you want to do when you're looking at a website is you want to look at the URL, you know, the little website at the top here. And URLs end with these different um, keys, these, these different um, .com, .gov, .edu, whatever. Okay, so... Um, Let's talk about each of these. So a .com, .com, .net, .htm, .html, all of these, you need to proceed with caution. If you see a website that ends at .com, .net, .html, be cautious. These are sites that literally anybody can edit. These are sites that literally anybody can fix. Um, there are commercial sites. I can go and I can purchase a .com right now and put whatever I want on it because it's mine. Okay, whether or not that's true or not, uh, as far as the information that I post, whether the information I post is true or not, doesn't matter, it's my website. <clears throat> .org is a little bit more trusted than a .com, but not by much. 
uh, again, .org is an organization that has a website that can, and they can put whatever they want about their organization or about their, their beliefs on that website. Okay, so again, proceed with caution. A .edu is an educational website. Uh, schools, high schools, colleges, they're more trustworthy than a .org or a .com, but they're going to have a lot of bias. And a lot of universities do not necessarily um, screen who they allow to post on their websites. So they just get some tech support guy to post something on there, and it could be whatever. So uh, proceed again with less caution than a .com or .org, but still with some level of caution. Now, a .gov site is a site that is created by a government agency, whether that's a local government, a state government, a federal government, whatever. Um, and these have to be fact-checked. So um, these are fact-checked by various organizations. And depending on the level of government that it's on, um, you can proceed with much more certainty. Now, be that as it may, a government site is not going to trash itself. So let's say you're doing um, a report on North Korea, for example, and you somehow manage to get to a website that is monitored by North Korea's government. Okay. Uh, first of all, I applaud your hacking skills if that's the case. But second of all, um, do you honestly think that North Korea is going to have anything negative to say about the way that North Korea runs North Korea's government? No. So be weary of bias. And then the last thing on this slide is this little tilde symbol, which is found um, right below your escape key on your keyboard. When you see this after one of these um, URL sites, if you see a tilde, like if you see a .edu forward slash tilde, um, that denotes a personal page. Okay. Um, for example, when I was in college and we were making websites, I was in a, a website making class, each of our individual websites even though they were on my college's um, page, you know, the college hosted our personal pages, they were still our own personal pages. And my personal page was monitored by only me. So I could have posted whatever I wanted. I could have posted stuff trashing the university if I wanted. And the university would have been fine with it because they don't bother to check the personal pages associated on their main page. So if you see that tilde, be careful about the authenticity of that website. So <clears throat> what are some places that you can trust typically? Research databases that you all have access to through your university's website. Um, these are fact-checked. These are what, are what is called peer-reviewed. Um, now, what that means is, let's say I have a PhD in, in biology. Um, I write an article asserting something about biology, okay? Then I get somebody else who also has a PhD in biology, and they fact check my information. Oftentimes, peer-reviewed journals and articles will be peer-reviewed by multiple people multiple experts in that field. Now that sounds great on paper, but in recent years, um, even peer reviewed journals have come under fire as people will, you know, let's say I have a certain political bias. I will seek out somebody who has the same personal bias and get them to fact check what I'm saying. That could be problematic because what if we're both turning a blind eye to people on our political side. So that calls into question our authenticity. You know, it'd be a lot better, much more academically um, 
sound and much more ethically sound if I were to have my articles peer reviewed by somebody on the opposite side. Uh, but that is not always the case. In fact, it's often not the case. So again, proceed with caution. Um, PhD or master's degree dissertations, you can often use those for research and those are usually peer reviewed by a lot of channels, a lot of different people. Um, scholarly articles like the databases, like I said, oftentimes are much, much more academically and credibly sound than something you would get just from based on a, a Google search. So you can trust those a lot more. Okay, so we'll skip that for now. Um, unreliable sources. These would be things like Wikipedia. We just talked about that. Um, blogs, tweets, personal websites, forums, for the love of God, don't ever go on to like Yahoo Answers and look for it to give you sound advice that's true. Uh, a popular one that students like to use these days is Quora. Um, again, you don't know who the person is that's answering your question or the question. So can you really trust them? Like, let's say they say they're a doctor. Are they really, though? I mean, you know, I can say that I have seven PhDs. Doesn't mean that it's true. So, you know, again, proceed with caution. Um, okay. So we already talked about Wikipedia. I'm not going to beat a dead horse here, but I thought this was kind of funny. Um, a few years ago, when the Astros knocked the, the Yankees out of the World Series contention, they, they didn't knock them out of the World Series. They knocked them out of the playoff hunt. Um, Jose Altuve was kind of the MVP of that, that season. And so uh, Astros fans made a joke to change the owner on the Yankees website to Altuve, you know, saying basically Altuve owns the Yankees. Okay, so let's talk about bias real quick. Bias is one of those like four letter words that people hear and they think, oh my God, bias, I can't have any bias. Bias is bad. And yes, bias is bad. But here's the truth of the matter. We're all biased. Everything is biased. Everything has bias. And that's fine. Now I'm not saying that you should ignore all bias. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is don't freak out and assume that just because something has bias that it automatically doesn't have merit. If you find the bias in something, what that should tell you is that you need to tread carefully and try to find another source with an opposite bias and see where they agree. I find that in, in my searches for information on the internet, that the truth is often somewhere in the middle. It's not on the extreme right. It's not on the extreme left. It's not even on the left or the right. It's usually somewhere in the middle. Um, what I mean by that is not to say that a conservative site or a liberal site can't have truth. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is, is that they are going to have truth that's going to be biased. And it's your job as a conscientious observer to spot the bias and try to sift through it to find the truth. For example, let's say that um, I have an article that is bashing Trump, okay? Uh, and then another article that is praising Trump. Both articles are talking about a specific area, a specific issue, a specific law that he allegedly passed or whatever, okay? Where is the truth in the article? Well, the truth in the article is where these two articles overlap with their data, with their information. So everybody's got some bias. The question is, how badly does the bias affect the reliability of that source to give you the information that you need. Okay. 
do they have an agenda? You know, if they're an extremely conservative site, they're likely to not bash conservative politicians. Same thing on the left. If they're a liberal leaning site, they're not going to likely bash liberal politicians. If, for example, um, a liberal site comes out and says this liberal candidate, this liberal politician is up to no good, that might be something to think about because they are uh, superseding their own bias to uncover some truth. Now, maybe they were strong-armed into doing it because what this person did was so bad that it can't be hidden. I don't know, but it's something to keep an eye on, okay? question is, to what extent is their bias, is it blatant, and does it affect the overall trustworthiness? So, all that to be said, uh, all, all that said, um, what do you look for? Well, there are one, two, three, four, five things that you want to look for whenever you find a source that you might want to use. The first is reliability, accuracy, and authority. In other words, to what extent can you count on the information of the site? How do you check this? Well, the first thing you want to do is you want to look at the URL. Okay, we covered that. Now I'm reading the article. Now I want to know, does my article, is my article reliable? Is it accurate? Does it have ethos? To do that, look at their bibliography. Every credible source should have links to where they got their information. Let's say they make a claim that last year President Trump said something crazy, okay? Um, and it ruffled a lot of feathers. Do they have a link to what he said? If not, that's a red flag. That's a question mark. Why don't they have a link to what he said? They said he said these things. Now it's their job to prove it. Did they prove it? Maybe they have a link to a video feed of a video clip of, of him saying those things. That's pretty solid evidence. If they don't, that's a problem. Also, maybe they link to another article in their own news organization. Well, right there, they're demonstrating bias. Do they have a link to an outside source? Do their links work? Do they have links at all? Do they have a, a works cited page, a bibliography page? Do they try to, when you look at the different links on their article, are all of the links to the same exact source or the same page? Or this, like, let's say they all link to Fox News or whatever. Wouldn't it be more trustworthy? Wouldn't it be better if they linked to a bunch of different news organizations and not just one? And especially not just one on their own political side of the fence? So, what's their ethos? How do you know that? Who's telling you this information? Look at the author. The author should have a little biography of who they are and what their credentials are. What's their ethos? Okay, look at the about page on the website. Every page, every website should have some sort of about page. Okay, currency. How up to date is the information? Do they have a copyright date on there? Do they tell you when this information came out? Um, do the links that they use also tell you when that information came out? How up-to-date are their links? How up-to-date is their information, their knowledge of the topic? Um, the older the topic itself, the less uh, necessary this is. But if they're talking about technology or politics or health care, for example, uh, these things all need to be up-to-date. Technology changes month to month. Okay, so um, if you're looking at a three-year-old technology article, I'm sorry, that information is already out of date and, and ancient. But if you're looking to do a paper on history, on like Hitler, for example, and the article is three years old, 
not that big a problem. Okay. So uh, currency is the second thing that you look for. The next thing you want to look for is fairness. Now, we already talked about bias. The question you have to ask yourself is, how much do they allow their own personal bias to get in the way of telling the information as accurately as possible? Um, the more sources that you read about a given topic, don't ever just take the first link that Google spits out at you. Um, and I'll get to that in just a minute, but don't ever just take the first link that Google spits out at you. If you're looking for a topic, let's say something happened in the news and you do a Google search on it and one or two sources, only, only one or two sources cover it. You have to ask yourself, is that because there's some big cover up going on or is it because maybe something is not true about what's being said. Maybe that thing didn't happen. Uh, celebrity death hoaxes, for example. Um, you know, if, if only one or two sources are saying that this celebrity passed away, did they really? I mean, I don't know. I guess it would depend on how famous that celebrity is. Is the article making an effort to present all of the information or are they clearly hiding something okay the more knowledge you can gain about a particular topic the more you can spot if some source is trying to hide certain key pieces of information from you about that topic okay and that speaks volumes to their fairness and to their bias okay um And again, it can still be a biased source so long as it makes a legitimate attempt to cover the topic fairly. Just because Fox News is a conservative source does not mean that you can never use it. If it's actually legitimately making an attempt, if that article is making an attempt to cover the information as fairly as possible, then who cares if it's Fox News or not? Okay, adequacy. Again, I just talked about this. How well do they cover the topic? Do you have questions after you read the topic, after you read the article? Do you still have questions about the topic? Did they cover the information uh, sufficiently? Okay, pretty self-explanatory. And then organization. How organized is the information on the page? Does the website look like it was made by somebody during advisory period, some high school kid during advisory period? Uh, does it look like it was made with like Microsoft Word clip art? Or does it look professional? Does it look tidy? Does it look neat? Are they trying to bury knowledge about the organization in a slew of clicks? For example, you know, we've all seen clickbait articles. You'll see some website and it's like, you know, top 40 celebrity controversies and um you have to click through like 800 slides to get to the information because they're burying it because they want you to click as many times on their page as possible because they get money for their clicks um or are they upfront and honest with the information you click on a link and it takes you directly to what they're talking about um the links all work. Uh, the web page isn't trying to bury information. It tells you right up, right up front, this is what we're trying to cover. When you click on their about page, does it take you directly to learning about the people that are writing it? Um, do they, are they upfront and honest with their own ethos, their own credibility? Does it look nice and neat and organized? Does it look like some sort of webmaster is actually you know on top of taking care of that website these things do matter and they can speak volumes to how um reliable that article is and there's so much more this is just the tip of the iceberg we'll talk more about this stuff later um, but that's it for now